Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is the Microsoft Teals uh, informa volunteer informational call, and I'm excited to to be here. We're all excited to be here, and it's it's great to see uh, everyone's been introducing themselves, name, city, and state in the chat. We have people from from all over the country, which is awesome. Thank you for joining us. Christy, can you switch the slide? Yes. Thank you. So we're here today. Um, uh, I don't know if you each wanted to ind individually introduce yourselves, maybe. Go right ahead and I'll go last. I'm, I'm muted right now. And so I'll go ahead and first. Uh, my name is Tanya Davis. Thank you all for joining. I am a one of the regional managers from the Southwest region in Houston, Texas. I um, have a background in computer science. I did computer science as an undergrad, um, went to work for IBM after that, went back to grad school um, with, for an MBA, and then moved to Texas as a senior product manager with Texas Instruments. Um, after working for Texas Instruments for a little bit, I moved on to full-time mothering, which is where I made my entree into education. Taught math for four years, computer science for three years, and was uh, mortified to see what was happening in the computer science education space. So voila, landed here with Teals, um, trying to make a difference in this area. And we thank you all for joining and hope uh, you can join us in this journey. Hello, my name is Christy Pete. I am the regional manager for Tennessee in the Southeast region, particularly the city of Memphis. So excited to be a part of this call today and to share about Microsoft Teals. Uh, I am a former educator, been an educator for over 12 years, have a business background, graduated with an MBA from Bethel University, and currently kind of on hold with my doctorate degree, uh, working on that. So um, I am excited because I had the opportunity to also teach computer science as well in high school. Um, and, and after teaching it, went on to be a CTE director and shared and expanded the horizons of students when it comes to choosing a career or college. And so I'm just so excited about the opportunity to work for Microsoft Teals and help expand the reach of computer science for students and help build out the programs in each high school in the city of Memphis. And just so excited about our journey here and your opportunity to be a part of this great effort and share your experience and passion for computer science as well. Thank you. And I'm Alice Piper Leonard. I am the regional manager for Chicago. And uh, I come from uh, the, the, the world of higher education and nonprofits, especially as it relates to project management. And, and even more particularly in sustainability and in STEM. And so I've, I've been fortunate to work a lot in the, uh, the arena of community colleges and with, with building programs that would support STEM and CTE for youth. And so this is really, uh, you know, being part of the TEALS program is really exciting because it, it's allowing me to be able to take a lot of my skills and really to, be a, a bridge builder for um, really for like the, the rich industry that computer science has and, and kind of building that with, with, uh, with education. So we're, we're all happy to be here and looking forward to, to sharing our, um, our program, our, our TEALS program with you. Was I muted the whole time? So strange. Okay, can you change the slide, Christy? Essentially, here we are. We we're looking at the 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 the, the, the bridge. What I like to call is the bridge because we have um, you know almost seventy percent of jobs that are that are STEM that are related to to computing, and we have a need for bridging that with the number of uh, high schools with uh, that that only you know 
just over 50% of our US high schools teach computer science and our students um, are really at a lack of being able to have the opportunities to have access to, to the computer science classes and curriculum. And, and even from that world um, of education, our, you know, we don't have as many teachers uh, that are that have the, the curriculum knowledge and, and have the foundations in, in being able to teach that, the credentials to be able to teach computer science. And, and so we have even have like only about 30% of them that have a related degree with that. So we, we, we want, you know, this is, this is really the impetus for the creation of TEALS and being able to, to, uh, to find more of an opportunity for students to be able to, to segue into uh, computer science careers and, and be able to fill those jobs that are out there and be able to be part of the industry and, and have access to that. And so, um, I don't know, Tanya, do you want me to reference the chat or you just, the question that you asked is more just as, a, as okay. All right, Chris, just, you... just connecting the, the why of what we're doing, just to get a pulse for what the audience has seen. Definitely. Christy, could you? Jane, thank you so much. So why, you know, the TEALS program has really been um, around since 2009. It stands for Technology, Education, and Literacy in Schools. We've been fortunate to help build programs across the United States, British Columbia, Canada, and, and also in Mexico. Uh, what makes the program unique is that it's offering equitable, inclusive computer science programs at the high school level. And it's, it's pairing the, the high schools and the, the, the high school teachers with industry professionals, individuals that um, have a, a passion and a knowledge base in computer science and are able to come into the classroom and really share their knowledge base and share their, um, the breadth of what they know with the teachers and with the students. And we wanna be also to make sure that um, individuals and students that have been traditionally maybe excluded from computer science learning because of race, gender, or geography are, are able to be included and are able to be part and parcel of, of the classroom experience. We wanna make sure that the individuals can continue their education and be more prepared for employment in, in our today's economy. Thank you. Our volunteers are the foundation of the TEALS program. They help um, you know, bridge the subject matter um, gaps that maybe the teachers may not have. And they bring in a rich amount of, of knowledge that, that the, at the classroom level that, um, that relates directly and in real time to what's going on in the industry. And that's something that's really unique and it allows uh, the students to really be able to tap into what's going on, you know, in the real world and, and really hear, you know, real life experiences and um, learn about different facets of industry because you have different kinds of volunteers or different, sometimes we'll, you know, have different um, speakers to talk about, what, you know, what that looks like on the ground uh, in, in the real world, so to speak. And so our Hills volunteers also are able to make an impact at the, you know, for teachers and, and our, as the teachers can kind of impart their knowledge to the students and it really kind of creates a very multiplied uh, rippled effect. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's really our foundation. And so we invite you to, to consider that as an opportunity to come out and maybe support our, our, um, our, our program in that way. Christy, can you click the slide? Thank you so much. We've been fortunate to build our program since 2009, as I said, and we're almost close to having reached uh, 100,000 students throughout the, the three countries, the United States, British, uh, British Columbia, Canada, and, and Mexico. So we have, um, just in this last year alone, with 63% uh, of our, our schools being Title I schools. And 17,000 students have been, um, have, had, have had a TEALS uh, classroom this last year with 626 teachers 
throughout the United States, British Columbia and Canada. And, and we've been able to be, you know, as you can see from, from the, the green dots designated across, across the, the country and, and even overseas. So Teals continues to, to influence uh, far and wide and, and build our programs that way. We focus on students that have traditionally been excluded from computer science education. Uh, we're specifically wanting to make sure that when we work alongside and we, we prepare the, the teachers and the, the volunteers to, to embark on that journey in the classroom, that there is, um, that, that the schools have access and provide access to computer science programs um, through the training and the volunteer support and the resources that they, that also are, we have diverse, okay, do you wanna go ahead? Or do you want me to, okay. Okay, so um, the uh, students have, I see what you mean. No, go ahead, go ahead. Cause I realized I did, I did go over. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to Tanya because it's in the middle of, uh, I, I, uh, I had stepped over and, and it's, it's your turn. <laughs> I, I just want to pick up from where um, Alice left off. One of the things that you saw on the previous slide, the growth that we've experienced since 2009, we recognize that we have a responsibility um, to make a difference as far as underrepresented populations grow. We've seen a lot within our program. Specifically, um, we in 2020, um, our response, we always had a focus on diversity and inclusion, even prior to the pandemic. What the pandemic did for TEALS as a program was um, gave our CEO, our CEO made the commitment to be intentional, right? And we talked to our schools about that. You've got to go out and get students because they don't just naturally come to you. And so we opened up the Southeast. And so if you look across prior to 2020, we, um, were, not, we were in Georgia and Atlanta. We weren't in Tennessee, but we weren't in the whole Southeast, right? We were only in a handful of regions. Now we added um, 15 new regions with five expansion regions to really make a difference in this area. So we wanna make sure that their access is there. That's the whole foundation of TILS, making sure computer science classes are available for people to take. Then we want the schools to ensure that the demographics of the computer science class reflect that of the campus, right? And so whatever, if you have 25% red, 25% blue, 25% green, 25% yellow, then, that's what your computer science class should reflect as well. And so we challenge our administrators and our, um, our, our campus personnel to be intentional with their recruitment um, to make sure that opportunities are available for every student. And then we focus on helping them with inclusive resources and supports um, to impact their strategy, to impact the learning environment. Studies have shown um, over the years, the environment at work does matter. And so likewise, environment in education does matter. And teachers know that. You walk into, uh, if you've got kids, you know, you walk into their, their classroom and it's so inviting and welcoming and, it, and it's a fun place to learn. Well, we want that experience to happen in the computer science class as well. And I can tell you from experience that doesn't always happen. So in everything that we do, we have to be intentional. And so we, we ask our partner schools to work with us in this space. All right, so how do we do that and how can you help us? So we require our partner schools to address those areas that I just mentioned, access, diversity, and inclusion. But how can volunteers work with that? Well, especially one of the things that we really were excited to um, partner with Blacks and Technology is because we know that if people if students can see individuals that look like them, then that increases the likelihood that they might pursue computer science and technology as a future career. And I think, I, I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say that, but what you specifically as a volunteer can do 
is kind of learn the schools. You may be in a region where it's not an expansion region and the school that you volunteer in may not have um, uh, as diverse a population, but we wanna make sure that students there who are there can see you and can know what's happening. So we encourage you to see what your school is doing, um, help the teacher, they, we, provide the resources and strategies, and we ask the schools to commit to those. And we, they discuss those as a teaching team. And so that you can be part of the process. You can share your experience. What made you decide to pursue a career in technology and maybe leverage that to help the, the teachers in, in your school know what types of things are engaging for, um, for students. Um, many of our volunteers also do career talks and participate in career days. These are obviously optional. Just volunteering in the class will be sufficient, but it's just something that you might consider. And even I encourage um, some of my volunteers if they have opportunity to talk to the feeder schools from the high schools that we partner with, because so frequently, at least here in Texas, there is a requirement for eighth grade students to elect their program of study when they leave eighth grade, which is pretty daunting when we talk about it, but that is what's required. And so sometimes exposing students at a younger level helps encourage them as well. All right, so I kind of talked about some of those, but your, your participation in TEALS as a volunteer um, actually helps us close that gap. Um, one of the things that students we've heard students say is that, oh, so-and-so told me I should do it. And then, and then I tried it and I did it. And so having an adult build that up in students um, is tremendous. So helping them understand their CS, helping them increase their self-efficacy in the space, um, helping them with their programming skills, helping encourage them to participate in computer science and uh, activities outside of the day of the CS class in extracurricular, whether it's a camp or an after school program or a hackathon. Um, and again, sharing your story. All of those things work together to help encourage students to pursue the faith. So you can help in that, in that manner. So we don't, we recruit you to volunteer, right? Frequently we get questions from volunteers. It's like, okay, I've not been in the classroom since I was in high school, gonna have to kind of help, help me out. So we provide training. We don't drop you in, um, like just parachute you, we use that as a little funny, funny analogy, but we do provide you training. So during the course of the summer, you'll have access to this education best practices, You'll have access to um, diversity, equity, and inclusion training provided by the Kapoor Center. Your regional managers um, also support you throughout the school year. The, we have um, volunteer social activities as well. We have forums for volunteers to um, answer questions and give and receive feedback um, through our through our um, networks. Um, and so we have multiple opportunities for you to engage. We'll come out and, and visit with the class and, and check in on you and make sure that um, your experience is going as expected. So we wanna make sure that you are ready and prepared for the launch of school in August. So, I, and um, Alice mentioned earlier, the, um, the span, the growth that we've experienced since 2009, we can't do this work alone. Um, and so when you look at the companies that have, um, that our volunteers come from, it's well over um, 700 organizations. Um, we have over 1600 volunteers this past school year. Um, and you get regular connections with the teaching team, with other teaching teams. Uh, and so it is a community. You're not just um, a silo with your individual teaching team. 
Um, and a little bit later, I think we, I think in my, in my next slide, we talk about some of the companies, the different companies that support our efforts, some of the larger ones that you might recognize. So this is just to emphasize that it's not just Microsoft. Um, I've had some volunteers, like one of the guys, I had a guy on one of my teams from Apple. Well, he, he was here with Schlumberger, and then he took a job with Apple and moved to the West Coast. And he was a little concerned, but it doesn't matter. We, it, there, there's no competitors in this space because we all need skilled employees, right? Our customers, our competitors, um, our, our partners, we all need increased space. This is a both end. We're going to grow the pond with the effort that we make. One of the uh, metrics that we have focused on really since about 2012 is expanding also to rural areas. We know that um, rural communities throughout America really are um, uh, have a need for technology and for skilled professions. One of the things that really has been tremendous, um, I say tremendous, this might be, but out of the pandemic though, is that those students who live in rural areas can still pursue computer science and return back and bring their salaries and their incomes from the companies that they work for. Because I think now that more people, that it's more acceptable to work remotely, this um, underscores our commitment to serving those rural areas as well. So we've been doing this for a while. Um, we all are familiar with it now. It used to be a harder sell to, to get schools to accept, but if there are no professionals in your area, this certainly is a viable and uh, an effective method of instructional delivery. And so we've been doing it for years. We've got modules on how to do it effectively. Um, and so we are prepared in that space if you do in fact engage with your campus in a remote in a remote manner. So what does a volunteers week look like? What is the actual commitment? So it is a school year program. So we keep mentioning the computer science class. So it goes with the high school computer science class, which means that the class will meet um, depending on if it's block schedule or regular bell schedule, um, one to two times per week is what you'll engage. Um, that will be um, anywhere from, um, if it's a regular bell schedule, it might be 45 to 50 minutes. If it's block, it might be 90 minutes. Um, and so if you are in a co-teach model, which is our highest touch, you might be preparing lessons, um, delivering the instructional materials, and so you might have a little additional time um, to prepare your lesson and go over what you're, what you're going to present and share with the students. Um, then the cl actual class time itself um, is, the, is the second piece. If, you're a la if you are a teaching assistant, you might only do the, um, you would just come into the class. We also ask that our teams meet and touch base um, once a week, so that might be about 30 extra minutes. So all in all, it could be anywhere from about um, one to three hours each week. So you'll have the preparation time and then the actual instructional time. And I think Russell actually ended up, I was looking to see if he was coming in Russell is a Houston volunteer. He is, um, interesting story about Russell. When I recruited him, he was working for Amazon. This just kind of goes to show you how we're all, we're all agnostic. Um, since being, he's, he's going into his third year, somewhere in year two, he joined Microsoft. So <laughs> it just kind of worked out. But he is a principal architect um, in our Vanguard Technical Delivery Group and is a volunteer here at Hastings, in our Hastings High School um, in A-Leaf here in Houston. One of the things that, uh, and since he's not here, I'll tell just one, one little story in his absence. He, just this past school year, things have obviously kind of opened up a little bit, but he brought the kids um, from his school, not just from his class, but he opened it up 
And so two other teachers were able to bring some of their students and he set up a tour of the Microsoft Technology Center here in Houston. Um, and he and another gentleman uh, delivered, took the kids around, brought them lunch and um, hosted just a fun day. And though, so that's one of those things that you can do is to encourage host them at your, you know, maybe they can come and do a site visit or take a tour. Um, but those are things that um, we encourage our volunteers to do. And Russell is one of those who has done it. If he comes on, we'll bring him back. Christy? Okay, I'm sorry. I was trying to find that mute button throughout all of this. Um, okay, so let's talk about what courses we off, we support. We support four different courses. Two of them are introductory courses and the other two are advanced courses. These introductory, introductory courses are intro, intro to CS and APCSP. We call them AP Computer Science Principles. Uh, both can be considered uh, full year courses. The intro to CS can be a semester long course, but both of them do um, cover basic computational thinking and programming. And um, the APCSA is a little bit more rigorous than the intro and is, um, it includes creativity programming and global impact, but both of these are the introductory courses that most schools um, have. And, and please be advised, not all schools have all of these courses. And then there's the advanced courses there, the APCSA and the computer topics, uh, computer science topics. The APCSA is a more advanced college level course um, that and can be a full year long course as well. And it focuses on objective oriented programming problem solving in Java. And the um, computer science topics could range from um, the courses, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, the courses of cybersecurity, CompTIA, um, certification preparation and Python two and three. And usually the prerequisite for that particular uh, course is the AP, uh, APCSP or intro course. So these are the courses that we do support in high schools. As we continue, um, the TILS volunteering provides benefits for both the individual and the organization. So he, please note that 79% of employees who have volunteered have reported a greater sense of mission at work and a more self-gratifying type of uh, nature to where they're happy, they feel passionate about it. Um, when engaging with the TILS program, um, it provides that self-fulfillment as I was speaking about, where the, in, the volunteers actually get an opportunity to um, improve their satisfaction and retention when it comes to even their themselves as they work in their company. They gain skills training and professional development training where they actually can use the uh, skills that they gain through in the classroom in where it benefits their job and is impactful connections with the community. Um, not only are you the TILS volunteer, but you begin to make new connections and network with the, the school as, whether, as well as other um, connections that you'll gain throughout this process. And it helps shape and engage local talent pipeline. So again, there are benefits that benefit both you as a volunteer and your company. So it's such a great opportunity to be able to um, see this happen overall. Um, another thing that we are happy to say is that we make it, it makes a real impact on students and teachers. It is so important to know that what you do can actually impact or change the trajectory of students' lives as well as building the capacity of the of CS for the teacher, like some of the teachers um, feel confident. Um, and if you have one of the following, whether it's a CS uh, graduate degree, um, a, a, a in industry professional related CS related role or junior, senior, undergrad in computer science, you do qualify as well as, um, you know, being able to have 
good speaking skills. Um, again, you qualify for this. The, the students and the teachers, they need you. Um, here's what you do. Apply your knowledge and experience to ignite interest in CS for students. Spread the word to some of your colleagues. You have people that you work with. Um, I know it's only a few of us on here, but it all it takes is a few to actually share what's going on in CS classes through Microsoft Tills and share um, that you are a part of something and maybe they will love your testimony and be able to want to share the same interest in teaching as well. So as we continue the benefits, there are great benefits in being a TILS volunteer. Um, you could add it to your resume. It's always great to be able to add different um, uh, volunteer opportunities to your resume. You expand your network with industry professionals. You meet other IT professionals. Who knows? It may open up another job for another co for another company that you can work with. I've seen that happen where volunteers have worked with Teals and and they've connected with um, IT professionals from another company. And voila, you have another opportunity to advance. And um, being what you need or had. So again benefits of being a volunteer, a uh, TILS volunteer will help, you know, inspire the next generation of innovators, which are our students. We're so excited. As you can see this QR code, you can actually scan that to apply. It will take you directly to our website where it will allow you to fill out the application. And again, we're at a stage in our recruitment season to where we are quickly trying to get our volunteers in place and published to where they are introduced to their teaching teams of schools and where you're introduced to the, um, the principal, the vice principal, the teacher and the other volunteers that are part of that team. So we do encourage you to uh, apply today. Please make a difference in the life of students. So the next steps, the next steps in this process is again, that QR code actually leads that to that particular uh, website. You can copy and paste it. And again, we are all here um, as part of the TILS team, me, um, Alice and Tanya, um, please excuse, Naya is long, no longer with us, but she actually helped us to put this together as well. Help spread the word. Um, we are excited about what you can do to help impact students. Uh, again, if you have any questions at this time, please uh, let us know. You can email us, you can come off. Um, you can add it to the chat box, whichever, whatever you want to do. And if any other ladies would like to add any other thoughts to this particular slide or even was, to the next slide. I was slide. just going to say, we've got a, a, a nice um, small group. If, But I don't know if in, in this space when it's set up with host and panel, if people can come off. Yeah, I'll, I'll, so I was just about to go to that. So if anybody wants to ask questions verbally, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute your microphone. Um, oh, that's Russell. Yeah, and if um, if you're shy, feel free to put it in the chat. That's fine. Uh, but um, uh, more, um, uh, be feel free to just go ahead and um, make yourself available for uh, for Q and A by raising your hand. If we don't mind, we'll go ahead and. Uh... Russell, you want to say hello, introduce yourself? He made it in. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, I'll have to um, unmute Russell. So um, I'm going to do that now. One second. Okay. And there is a hand. Aaron. Aaron okay. Um, hi, everyone. Hey there. Um, I, gu I guess, uh, do I, I, guess uh, I need to introduce myself. I'm a. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, principal architect developer is is my new address book title. What it used to be was principal software development engineer. So I'm an engineer at Microsoft, um, and uh, I've known Tanya uh, since my uh, over the last what three four years exactly. of involvement with Teals because uh, I, I actually met Tanya and became involved with Teals before I became a Microsoft employee when I was working at AWS. So. Uh, just uh, in, uh, happy to be here, um, and 
yeah so well um, that's just a brief introduction for me i told them about the uh, field trip you organized um and working with the kids so you guys um i think aaron had a question dennis i did um there we go yeah uh sorry my, my apologies uh just want to give him a chance uh -huh. um yeah my name is aaron walker uh i'm solutions architect here at at ibm uh well specifically boxboat which is an ibm company and uh you know i like to do a lot of volunteer stuff uh locally right now so i i, I volunteer at a couple schools both in sacramento and in uh in the bay area um and also foster some dogs um but in general uh just always looking for new um volunteer opportunities. And my question was, uh, is there a list of participating schools um, that, that you know, we can kind of see, uh, you know, what schools in the local area uh, do this or, uh, or is this primarily remote? It's, it's both. You could, but you could, when you go into the Teal's volunteer application, and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a map. And that map shows you the schools that we are partnered with or that have applied to partner for 22-23. I think you go, if you go in the other way, you'll see the 21-22 schools. But if you go in through the volunteer app, you can see the 22-23 schools. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. The Sacramento. That's Bay Area, right? Yes. My California geography is, that is a little easy. <laughs> no, no worries. But it is, yeah, that's Bay Area. We're, in, we're definitely in the Bay Area. So Russell, can you, can you maybe share, there are some chat questions too, what has been probably um, one of the most surprising things that you ran into as a volunteer? Um, okay, as well, surprising, uh, as a as a volunteer, one of the most surprising things, um, you know, one of the is the the level of interest in the students, um, and and the, the 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 most surprising thing, especially since the first year I taught uh, intro to to computer science, and then this past year I taught uh, the AP class. But there is uh, the level of interest that we had in the student from the students was really was really great, um, and and surprising because um, you know typically we you know we hear about because I the school I work at isn't isn't an underrepresented isn't is is defined as an underrepresented community, and um, you know so I, so you expect you know in 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 the class that I had the biggest surprise was. Is that there were actually more girls than boys in the class, which that is, is <laughs> that is <a> <laughs> yeah, there were more girls than boys in the class. But um, the the other thing is is that being in an underrepresented community, you only figure, oh yeah, there's only going to be uh, one, maybe two. Um, the amount of of engagement with technology, and I'm going to give this, I'm going to do this as a as a uh, uh, sending out some props to the teachers um, at, at Hastings. They've done a really great job in a predominantly Black and Latino school to cultivate the level of interest in, in, in technology. Um, just by the virtue of the numbers of students and that, that we had at the field trip, they were not just kids from the class that I volunteered at. They were kids from the intro class, there were kids from some of the engineering classes um, that, that came uh, on the field trip that we did to the, the Microsoft Technology Center in Houston. So um, I thought that that, you know, that that was a big surprise and how many kids um, from, from this underserved community that were there. And, and that's really why I volunteer with Teals. Um, you know, I guess a little bit more about me is that um, I'm, yes, I'm a, 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 software a software architect developer with Microsoft, but I'm, you know, I'm Black and Latino, and I'm a senior citizen. Um, 
So it's, you know, it, the thing is, is that one of the things that I want to, to, to show and be an example to the kids are, is that not only, um, you know, is it possible for, um, for people who look like them to be involved, you know, to get, to have careers in tech, but, you know, if you, you know, if you do the right things, if you keep your skills up and stuff, it's possible that you could be somebody like me and have been working in it in this industry for over 40 years. So, yeah. That's probably some technology names that our audience might not even recognize. Pardon me? I was just saying, you could probably name some uh, technology that some of the folks in our audience may not may not recognize. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> you know when I first when I first started. I mean, you you know we think nothing of of doing apps, but when I first started coding, um, you know we had to read we had to read the bootloader into the machine with a paper tape. Um, everyone's heard of IBM cards. Well, I actually used those. Um, but before we used to have to read the bootloader into with a paper tape and and enter, you know, we, and, and to, to read that in, you actually had to flip switches on the on the computer's uh, panel. Um, but let's put let's put it this way, you know, the C programmers talk about K and R, which is the Kernighan and Ritchie reference oh. to um, to for C. Well, I actually learned C from K and R. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, but yeah, no. I mean, I remember Unix when it was new, <laughs> but I can sling, but I could sling code with, with the best of the kids today. And that's yeah. all about keeping your skills up. I mean, um, when we had the open house at the, at the ION, you know, mm -hmm. we were just sitting around shooting the bull and, you know, I mean, the thing is I worked in Silicon Valley in the eighties, um, I was a chip designer and de developer at AMD. I, I was one of the people that put together the first, um, the first LAN controller chip um, that allowed PCs to be connected to local area networks. And you know, from that you had network PCs. From that you wound up with you know one of the things that that, that fell out of that was um, the web and the internet and connecting connecting personal computers to the web. I mean, all of that, if you don't, if you don't have the ability to put um, PCs on networks, you don't get any of that. So, I mean, I worked on, on some of that kind of uh, uh, stuff. Um, you know, so, you know, I mean, I developed a, a language, a computing language called ABLE for build, for defining programmable logic structures. And, um, and the company that I worked for, we sold that and some of the patent and the other patents that I worked on with, uh, to, uh, to Xilinx. And now what Xilinx has done, well, Xilinx recently merged with AMD, but, but all of those, you know, all of that programmable logic, field programmable data and stuff is what people are using today to accelerate training machine learning models, which is what's moving AI forward. So. Uh, some of the technologies that, that I've been involved in. So now thinking on your experience from a different perspective, what um, what was challenging about working with high school age students? Um, the, the challenging part of working with, um, with high school age students especially for an old, older person like me, is to, um, to communicate with them at their level. Um, for me, part of that, uh, the thing that helps me uh, with that was I spent, when, while my kids were growing up, I was a youth sports coach. And, you know, so when, like, when, the, when my kids were small and they were learning t-ball and you had to teach them how to hit from a pitcher, you know, most of the adults would throw underhand to them and the kids would have to swing up at the ball. What I did was I actually sat down in the dirt and pitched to them overhand so that they could get used to seeing the ball come to them the way a kid would pitch to them. And so I apply those, those same principles in how I volunteer, but the, the, that's a, that can be a struggle 
to yes. communicate with kids at their level. That is part of our training. That's part of the, the what we do in our training is try to help um, our volunteers recognize their expert bias. That was, a, that was actually was the perfect analogy. I've, I've, I've taken a couple of um, analogies from you. I'm gonna steal that one too. But that okay. is the things that we, that we teach our volunteers, right? It's like, we have expert bias. We know what we're saying. We know what we're talking about. But can you explain what a loop is to a 14 year old who's never been exposed, right? What, what does that mean? Can we make it relate somehow where to meet them at their level? So I love that. And that was a great analogy. Any other great, you guys don't be shy. We've got a few, we got a few minutes. I think we had an hour. Yeah, we had a few other questions in the chat too, Tanya. Okay, that's um, what I was trying to Charlie look it up. Church. Charlie Church wanted to know, was the this um, training here um, with the, as, as a TILS volunteer, would you have to volunteer in a school? And I think we answered that one where you mm -hmm. have your option of remote or in person. And then his second question was the training received from TILS is all we need to get started. Was the second question? Pretty much. We, that, that's what, um, because part of that yeah. training, so we have the best practices, but then you'll get curriculum training. Right, your curriculum training is asynchronous. So we, we have two components. And so that those best practices and the uh, de and I is not all that you get. The rest of it will be linked, but you'll get some other curriculum training as well. So you'll, you'll be ready. Russell, did you feel prepared? Yes. Um, the, yeah, the, especially the, um, the, you know, learning um, some of the, uh, the, 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 the taxonomy and, and pedagogy and stuff, but, mm. you know, the teaching methods and learning methods, those, you know, because as a tech guy, you know, those are things that, um, you, you know, we might not necessarily um, um, be exposed to. Mm. So, you know, the, and, and learning, so in learning about how people, learning about how people learn, and you know, and how to how to support that was was really really helpful for me in how I dealt with my class. So yes, that was yeah, that was a good point because we do go over some of the we call them the teaching tool toolkit or tool belt, right? Where you put your the things that you'll need. So we teach you some strategies, things that teachers know um, that that we learn in teacher school or alternative alternative certification programs or however we come to the teaching field. Um, but so we do share those with you. But you know, it's, it's just like with programming, right? You, you learn, a, when you learn the skill kind of in the training, it isn't until you actually use it that it becomes real and you really kind of get it. But you are ready because we will give you the tools. And you might not remember it off the top, but you'll know where to find it. And that's that's the name of the game. And we, I think we all can appreciate that, right? You got a spec book or something, you can look up the exact rule to make it right and go for it and be successful. So yes, we do give you what you need. At least we, we, we that, that's one of our, um, I, if, if I could say we have a point of pride, um, the training has, re has, has received really, really good feedback um, from volunteers when, who have gone through the training program. And I think uh, um, Alice had mentioned it, but I've had some volunteers say it, it helped them be a better mentor and a better leader in helping bringing um, junior programmers or others who are um, under them along as well. So some good benefits there. That was a good question. Did we miss? Because I think I mi I missed going up. Were there any other questions? Don't be shy. Comments. How many folks? I'll I'll ask a question. How many folks going to go ahead and submit their app? I was looking for my. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but we appreciate everybody. <laughs> actually, actually, you know, the the the, the thing is, is, is that, um, you know, this is probably one of the, um, if you, you know, as long as you can get the time commitment from your job, but this is one of the best ways to, to give back. I mean, we see what's going on. We see all the nonsense that's going on in the news, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and those of us who are in the tech world, you know, we know that, that, you know, the, 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 the tech bro culture isn't going anywhere. Right. And the only way that and the only way that we're going to be able to do anything about that is to to help bring the younger generation along. And mm -hmm. also, you know, we're seeing the challenges. Right. Um, we you know, we look at we look at, at at what the economic prospects for for our kids are. Right? My, my kids are just finishing college and stuff. Right. They're they're They are now going out into the world. And, you know, one of the things that I've you know wanted to prepare, try to prepare them for um has been you know what this you know what the what the what the brave new world is like because it's no longer um you know the the thing where you know the where there are where there's security in low-end jobs because mm -hmm. we are slicing we are slicing huge swaths off the bottom end of the job pyramid and the thing is is that you know our kids um you know, by and large, we, you know, they are becoming more and, you know, whether we like it or not, um, they're becoming more and more disadvantaged. So the question I'm going to have for everyone that's listening here, you obviously have an interest in, in the people who are coming behind you, but what are you willing to do? How are you willing to leverage where you're at now to help that, that generation or two that's coming from coming behind you? in a world where the, where the window of opportunity is shrinking? What are you willing to do? I like that, that was well said. It is shrinking. And I'll actually know they've got to be prepared for jobs we don't even know what the titles are. Right. Yeah. You know, the cloud I'm, architect, I'm, what was the cloud architect? 10 years ago. <laughs> right. I mean, the thing, the, 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 and, 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 and as much emphasis as we put on code, right? And you, you see it all over the place. Oh, black girls code, this girl codes, this person codes. It's like, you know, and, and, and now because, you know, college, college costs so, so, so much, you know, people are starting to look at all these alternative streams and you've got all these boot camps springing up and blah, blah, blah. Right. But the thing is, if all you know how to do is code, guess what? There's people like me who are working on AIs that will take that job. There are people on the other side of the world who will work for 20 cents on the dollar who will take that job. So what I always tell kids is comp sci is great. Learning to code is great, but you have to solve bigger problems, right? And, and you know, one of, the things that, one of the things that I did in a previous job, a bigger problem that I solved was I built a startup um, company on top of a manufacturing company. They made devices uh, for, me, you know, that, that, that pharmaceutical and hospitals and stuff used to measure things like vaccines. So what they wanted to do was expand their market. I said, well, what, so what they did was they hired me to, to build for them a line of connected products, internet of things, right? So I did. And they, we, you know, I, I wrote all the software that went behind that and we built the products, we launched a line, um, a year and a half after we launched the brain, one of our biggest customers bought us, you know, a little $30 million a year company. They bought us for $165 million and then asked us, hey, take all these other products and make them connected too. So by, you know, so the key thing there was we use code to solve a bigger problem that somebody thought was, was worth paying money for. And that is how, you that is how we are successful with with technology learning to code is great but it's only a tool in the two belt learning how to solve a bigger problem is how we build careers and on that note i think we are right at time all right that was that was awesome thank you guys um well, thank you anyone, so much no problem uh for anyone who um 
did not get a chance to see the chat or if you're listening to this replay and um, want to know where to go to sign up is teals k12.org so that's t-e-a-l-s k 1212.org uh, and that'll get you to the homepage and you can sign up to be a volunteer there and get additional information um, I appreciate everyone for taking time out of their schedule. Uh, we will be following up, hopefully, with uh, some folks who will be signing up from uh, the Black Technology member base. And I look forward to working with you all in the future and developing our relationship even further. So uh, thanks again and have a good rest of the day. Thanks for having us. Right, thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.